Assalamu alaikum. My name is Tasvira Jessa, and welcome to my world. Join me on a brand new season of Iftar. I'm going to take you on a culinary journey across the globe. These simple, easy, and healthy recipes will be sure to bring a variety of different and popular flavors into your home. We will also be exploring beneficial health tips along the way. And at Sahur time, best to have slow energy releasing foods, things like oats. So get your apron on and let's get cooking. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Iftar on Ahlul Bayt TV with me, your host, the Svira Jessa. So the last episode that we were, we were together, we had gone to Mexico. For this one, I thought we'd do another long journey and we're going to go across to about to Lebanon. Um, because I thought Mahir Ramzan and a lot of us enjoy, we try and stay away from the fried food, but we like our bajiyas or our falafels the crispy texture. So this year I thought let's do a baked version, something a little bit healthier. For that we're going to be using tin chickpeas but again if you've got the dry ones soak them overnight, put in the morning boil them with some salt and some baking soda as well. Actually you can even put the baking soda in when you soak them overnight. It just makes them a little bit soft, softer. So for that we're gonna ha use chickpeas, fresh parsley, and some spices, garlic and lemon juice. So let's get started, shall we? So in the bowl here we have a big bunch of parsley and we'll just chop it down. To that we're going to add our bowl of chickpeas, so a couple of tins. Two, two large cloves of garlic grated. the juice of one lemon, and for our spices we have some red chili powder, some cumin and black pepper. And that will just give our falafels lots and lots of flavor. And last but not least, our salt. I think we need to use a good serving of salt in this because the chickpeas are quite bland. Need a lot to help them develop their flavor. Okay. Put the lid back on. Okay, when you do this, you want to pulse it as opposed to leaving it on just one number because otherwise it'll grind it to a very fine paste and you want this to be a little bit chunky. Now to this I'm going to add in about half a cup of oat flour. All this is is porridge oats that I've grinded down to a flour. Now that will just help make this dough a bit, the mixture a bit pliable when it comes to forming the falafel. super healthy alternative to fried kebabs. All right, that looks quite stiff. So when you add in your flour, add it in slowly. What we'll do is we'll put this on a grease tray and we'll form them into patties and leave them in the fridge for about 15 minutes just to firm up. And then we'll cook them in the griddle before we bake them. So again, just depending on the size you want, you could actually, for vegetarians, this would make a good burger. Just like that, keep doing this till you've completed using, well, since, till you've used up all your mixture. Okay, now that the patties are all done, we'll put them in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes just to firm up a bit so we can um, pan fry them and then put them in the oven to bake.
while that's in the fridge, we're going to make some hummus. Because yesterday, my Asia called me up and said, Mom, can you please bring some hummus on your way home? And I couldn't believe she said that to me. She had the audacity to say it to me. Because hummus takes no more than five minutes to make, start to finish, and I'm gonna prove that to you just now. Remember, I promised to show you how easy it is to knock up a bowl full of hummus. It's probably quicker for you to sit at home and make it than to go to the shops and go and buy it and come home to enjoy it. Ready, here we go. I've got two cans of chickpeas in there. I've got one and a half lemons squeezed. It all goes in. I have two cloves of garlic straight into my bowl. Don't put full cloves of garlic or chopped up garlic because it won't mince properly and you'll get bits of garlic going through, which isn't very pleasant. All right. The main special ingredient of hummus is tahini. Tahini is just sesame seed paste. Now, my mom says, oh my God, it's super fattening, I can't eat it. But I tell you, sesame seeds are full of calcium. They are so good for you. So, <sighs> splurge a little here. Unlike my mom, I won't be miserly with the tahini. So a good two to three tablespoons, straight in. Mix it up because sometimes the oil separates. And just, that'll be easier. There we go. That should be enough. And salt, can't do without the salt. You always need to try the salt. Remember, I said oh, chickpeas are very bland, so you need to try the salt just before you serve. And I'm also going to add in some Greek yogurt into this. Remember, I did tell you it's full of protein. So we're just going to add about a tablespoon. It just makes the hummus just that little bit more creamier. So a tablespoon, a big tablespoon of Greek yogurt. And that's it. Now, my secret ingredient that even Asia doesn't know is chili sauce. It gives hummus that little kick that it needs. So, a tablespoon, a teaspoon to a tablespoon of chili sauce. And here we go. And I hope you're counting. All right, I've taken the top lid off because I'm gonna pour in olive oil. Now, the olive oil I'm using is from Palestine. You want to use extra virgin olive oil. The cold press is the first press that comes out of the olives, which is the best one. You don't want to cook with it because it's really heavy, but this has a nutty flavor. It's a lot fresher and it's a lot, it's very healthy for you. So ready, here we go. There you go, almost ready. And enough to feed an army. All right, let's see what that looks like. Excellent. That's the consistency I like. I don't like it too smooth, but if you like it smoother and you don't like it so chunky, then all you have to do is process it a little bit more. All right, so let's plate that up, shall we? I think Asia's got her shoes on. And if you think about it, for that portion, what, it's a pound plus something? And we have made chickpeas are 25p a tin, so four for a pound in the shops right now. And we have made enough to serve not only Asia, but her whole friends group. Now how quick was that? All right. So we have enough in here for the platter. We'll drizzle on a little bit of olive oil over the top. Again, remembering this isn't what's going to give you the heart attack. That's actually what's going to keep you young, the fresh olive oil. And some mint leaves 
just to decorate. Again, these are mint leaves from the garden and the smell is incredible. My grandmother used to tell me, anytime you had a stomach ache, she says, just go in the garden, pick a few sprigs of mint and chew on them. And I'm sure you won't come back to tell me you still have a stomach ache. A small sprinkling of sumac, just to make it look pretty. And that's how quick it is to make a plate of hummus and put a tub in the fridge for later. Okay, I've got a griddle pan here that's been heating up. And into that, we put some coconut oil. Now, we're just browning them on the outside before we put them into the oven, because that will crisp up the falafel. So if you don't particularly want it to be very crisp, then don't worry about this. You can put them straight into the oven. And in we go. So again, this is something that you can prepare in advance and just leave it in the fridge for a few hours if you need to. And just cook it off before iftar time. So something you don't have to worry about at the end of the day. Okay, you can see it's starting to brown around the sides. So very gently, just flip them over. And again, you can make it more brown if you want it even crispier. So we can leave them up for a few more minutes. But you don't want to fiddle with them too much because they're getting softer as they're cooking. So this is the reason we put the oat flour in, is for it just to hold its shape. And otherwise, if we didn't, it would collapse at this stage. Once they're all cooked, they go into a hot oven for about 30 minutes. While that's in the oven, let's have a chat with Sreya for today's healthy tip. In my family, health comes first. So I met up with Sreya Jan Muhammad, a personal trainer and health coach, to answer my questions and give me advice on various aspects of health and wellness. Okay, for the aubergine dip, we need aubergine. And what you need to do to this, once you've washed it, dry it, pierce it with a knife at several intervals, cover it with olive oil, and put it in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes to cook on a high heat. So it will char the outside and bake the inside. Now I've already done that. And this is what it looks like. So it shrivels up once it cools down. You've got to leave it to cool to actually get the skin off. And it is so quick. That's all you have to do is peel it like that. And it goes straight into your mixing bowl. Now this is another good way of getting some vegetables into the children and it's disguised. They don't know that the aubergine is in there. And this is super healthy for those, especially from our Indian background who suffer from anemia, because aubergines are very high in iron. So just peel it back like so. Just like that, and again into the bowls. So we have two medium aubergines that have been baked for about half an hour. And to this, we now add in the juice of a lemon, a 
piece, um, a clove, a large clove of garlic. A bowl full of parsley. Just toss it in there like that. And about two teaspoons worth of tahini. And like I said, sesame seeds are full of calcium. So if you're not able to get calcium from milk or yogurt, then just a couple of tablespoons, chew on a couple of tablespoons of sesame seed every day. And the black sesame seed actually helps promote hair growth. All right, we'll add some salt to that. And that's it. That's how easy it is. We're just gonna add in three tablespoons of Greek yogurt and about a quarter cup of olive oil. That's it. Even quicker than hummus. Okay, so today on our trip to Lebanon, we made hummus quicker than Asia could get to the shops to get some. And we made aubergine dip and baked healthy baked falafels. So thank you for joining me, the Sfira Jessa at Iftar on Ahlul Bayt TV, and inshallah we'll see you again soon. Asalaamu Alaikum.